mm. every year. Okay, so there is a special day that's actually dedicated to World IP, uh, and perhaps you can tell us a little bit about about the theme that they've dedicated this year. Okay, so every year they choose a theme. Uh, IP is vast, mm. so intellectual property is an umbrella term for many types of rights, right. patent rights, trademark rights, and so on. Mm. So it's very difficult to um, have a day and then focus on IP as a whole. Mm -hmm. So they have a team every year. Mm -hmm. So last year it was digital creativity and this year it's innovation, improving lives. So what the WIPO does and encourages all other associated parties, either, either intellectual property owners or people like us who help intellectual property owners protect their rights mm -hmm. um, to do events and activities around this theme. Mm -hmm. Either you give talks, seminars, or have contests, competitions. So uh, this year's theme is innovation, improving lives. So we're meant to encourage people to learn about innovation or find out what type of innovations are out there that are improving lives, um, whether it's improving um, water supply mm -hmm. or water cleanliness mm -hmm. or just technological advancements and so on. And what uh, will IP Day to be celebrated in the first place? Yes. Mm. So intellectual property is such a niche feel. Mm. So we talk about copyrights and music. Mm. So um, not many people are aware about it and how important it is. So it's yeah. about awareness of IP rights and how important the intellectual property rights are for a country. All right. Now, before I go into protection, I have mm. a few questions about protection. Let's talk about intellectual property. Uh, intellectual property per se. How do you define what is intellectual property? IP itself. So. The easiest way to explain it is it's protection of whatever you create. Okay. Intellectual property is property that your mind creates. Okay. That's why it's called intellectual property. All right. So anything that you create and you conceive, that idea, when you reduce it to substance, mm. can be protected. Okay. I wanted to uh, pinpoint here because I think there's a differentiation between ideas and the substance. So perhaps how, how, what, what is the intellectual property that you can protect? Okay, so let's take an idea for instance. Mm. Okay, you have an idea of opening an amazing restaurant, mm. and you have a new concept, mm. uh, and you would like to roll it out, and you talk to a friend about it. Mm. So that idea itself, the, the your friend can actually go walk away and, and actually execute it because you haven't, you have nothing. There's no substance. It's just some chit chat exactly. about an idea, right. a concept. But if you've already come up with a name, mm. uh, the brand for the restaurant, mm. uh, you've rolled out the concept, the mm. layout of the restaurant is special. Mm. There's recipe that you're using mm. that's unique to you. No mm. one else knows it, knows right. about it. Right. Then there's elements in that what you've executed that can be protected. So the thought of the chit chat about oh I want to create this and the the friend using it, it's not considered breach of your uh, protected so, rights so, yet? So yes and no, because it depends on whether when you had a chit chat with your friend, was were they under a confidentiality obligation? Okay. And most of the time, yeah. it's, it's never it's never a confidential. Yeah. It's over coffee and usually there's a bunch of friends yeah. and you're talking about a great idea. So yeah. um, if there's a confidentiality obligation, and this is usually through a non-disclosure agreement, yeah. then that can be considered a breach of that Information. Uh, information. Breach of that agreement to, to keep it confidential. Right. Otherwise, if the information was shared on just a random day basis. Yes. Yeah, so that idea wasn't protected, can't be protected. Right. Unless it has, uh, like you said, reduced, been reduced down to a substance. substance yeah. Because this brings to mind the Facebook story of, you know, how uh, yes. Mark Zuckerberg yes. and, you know, and the, the, the social whole, network, the movie, yeah, right? The movie, yeah. you know, talking about how. Because yeah. uh, he executed it. Okay, this Correct. is how it works. And then he went and programmed everything, executed yes. it. Yes. So, I mean, there's also confidentiality obligations there, yeah. um, but so it d really depends. So some sometimes there's cases where ideas are stolen, mm -hmm. but if there was a confidentiality obligation, you can actually sue for that. Right. But again, it's very difficult to prove it if there's exactly. nothing in paper. Correct. If you don't have it written, so yeah. So intellectual property is it's an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. It's a big term for many things that are in it. So let's take a Coca-Cola bottle mm. for instance. Okay. Coca-Cola has a unique shape of the bottle, right. okay, a silhouette look of it. That's right. Uh, that shape, when you look at the bottle, even without the label of Coca-Cola, yes, you can you, recognize it. Yeah, so yeah. you recognize that that belongs to the Coca-Cola company. Right. There's going to be fizzy drink in there that you recognize the taste. Yeah. So that type of rights should be protectable okay. by the company that created it. Right. Because they went all out to create something unique. That shape is distinctive towards what they sell. Mm -hmm. So those kind of rights are intellectual property rights. The shape can be protected, the brand can be protected. Uh, for copyright, anything that Bernama produces, mm -hmm. any any written work, slides, all your shows, when you air it, mm -hmm. if someone else actually streams it live, mm -hmm. that they'll be infringing your copyright. Right. So it's rights, it's rights 
for peop- things that people create. Right. Because uh, uh, when I was reading about intellectual property, I was trying to find a differentiation between uh, where is the line that you draw between uh, what is uh, legally protectable, I don't know whether that's the correct term, and what is just uh, thoughts and ideas and design uh, that has not been executed. So uh, from what I understand, as long as there's an expression of it, uh, that is something that you can then uh, protect. file to protect. Yes. But if it's just uh, the initiate, initial phase of the ideas going back and forth, it may or may not be protectable. It, yeah, it really depends on a case-to-case basis. Like For instance, we've had a case where um, we had it animation companies speak to us. So the, the, the animation, it takes the stages, the stages of production mm. uh, and the sketches that then yes. become to animation. So, right. so there's protection in every um, medium that you've created, even yeah. though it's not the final product yet. Yeah. So if someone has actually copied that specific thing, it can be protect. It can still be an actionable suit against them mm-hmm. for that part. So it, it doesn't need to be a complete uh, finalized version right. that you have protection only in that. Mm. Um, everything that's u- new and unique has has protection in it. Even the 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 process of it can be protected. Yes. Okay. Uh, now uh, when going back to intellectual property rights uh, and back to the IP theme for this year in terms of innovation. Um, there's this question about how does IP affect or uh, affect innovation per se? So, uh, interesting question, Elaine. Mm. It's actually um, when we talk about innovation, you're looking at mostly uh, technology, new uh, industrialized processes, machinery that's new or improved version of doing something, processes mm. or products. So, innovation helps a country when people know how something works. Yeah. But when something is created, usually the inventor or the creator has all the knowledge in yes, their head. Correct. So how do they learn from him? Mm. So that's how intellectual property laws come about, and specifically patent laws and design laws. Patent laws p- uh, require the inventor to actually put all the documents, write everything about the invention into a document called a patent mm-hmm. document. Mm-hmm. And in the document, any competitor, when they read the document, they will know how to reproduce this product. Exactly. And that knowledge helps them innovate upon this new invention or this process. Right. So when you know about it, you can definitely improve upon it. Yeah. You can't use it. So, yeah. so in return for writing and revealing all this knowledge to the government, the government because this document will then be filed with the government. So it becomes public. It becomes public right. disclosure. Okay. Um, but in return for giving all this knowledge to the government, I ha- then have 20 years protection ah. specifically for patents. Okay. I have 20 years protection um, for this new technology that I've created. Which means if anybody uses it, they will have to? Face me in court. <laughs> or uh, pay you to want to use it. Correct, yes. Right. You okay. get a license fee for it. Right. So that's why you see a lot of uh, patent um, suits between Apple and Samsung. Yes. And yes. you hear, the, hear about this a lot in the telecommunication industry. Yeah. Um, so someone misusing someone's rights. So. And but in return for that, you reveal all this information. So it helps innovation mm. uh, in that sense. People can constantly innovate. Right. It's not just kept in your head. Right. And if it's kept in your head, in theory, you can have it for forever, right? Yes. So they say that Coca-Cola and KFC ha- have their trade secrets, secrets forever. Yes. No right. one knows about it. Yeah. So that's the advantage. If you keep it inside and keep it within your own knowledge, you have monopolistic rights pretty much forever. Mm. But with inventions that have mechanical uh, technology behind it, people can reverse engineer. Right. So you put it out in the marketplace and it's not yours forever because someone can reverse engineer, especially someone skilled in that same specific yeah. industry. Yeah. You can just buy the product and figure it out uh, by you know a, a lot of experimenting and you might get to that same solution. Correct. So that's why the protection is then necessary. Right. So Because when you put it out there, people can actually break down the product and understand how it works. Yeah. So then you get 20 year protection, but in return you've revealed everything. So it's per on innovation. Right. So right. that's how um, intellectual property very much is uh, assisting innovation in all the countries. But but having said that, there's a huge debate right. uh, in the IP field because a lot of p- people also say, why is everyone very keen on monopolistic rights? That's mm-hmm. not so. Mu- that's not helping unity. Yeah. Why, why not share? Yes. <laughs> right. Why not share? That was my next question. So, so so well, that's also a good question. And the reason you don't share is, um, a reason sometimes it's not good to share is there's a lot of money spent, mm. money and time yeah. spent on researching and coming up with that solution. Yeah. Whether it's a drug, a new drug that solves a disease yeah. or an illness, um, whether it's a, a what are you were saying, Uber, te- Uber 
helicopters, right? Yeah. So whether it's a way of transportation, it's going to make life easier for all of us yeah. in the future. Yeah. There's a lot of research done in this, a lot of money and time expended by people yeah. Yeah. or investors ploughing in money because yes. they want to see returns at the end of it. Correct. So if you don't have returns at the end of the day, ROI, why would people actually invest into it? Yeah. Is it just for sharing? Then people will be broke. They'll yes. be, yes, let's share everything, but you will go into bankruptcy and it'll be very difficult yeah. in terms of, um, it will not be a practical environment. Yeah. So that's why um, there, there, there are debates and sometimes there's pros and cons, yeah. uh, but there are definitely more pros in terms of intellectual property rights protection. Yeah. Like it or not, there needs to be some reward at the end of that tunnel when you've you know, slogged and blood, sweat and tears have been put into this. And uh, then, of course, it then spurs on you know, that real passion that, okay, I'm going to get something out of this. Because I'll be beyond the, the fact that you know, I'd be able to uh, discover something new, but uh, we'll be able to spur innovation, yes. spur the next progress, because yeah. it's a continuous cycle. It's not just a one-off thing and then it's Lay back and yes, and then yes. <laughs> sit on my laurels for the yes. rest of my day. True, kind of true. Thing. I mean, let's look at the phone industry for instance. Yeah. First, we had messaging, easy messaging. Then they've combined a camera to the phone, can't, and now almost everything's combined to a phone. I can't imagine how that has you know accelerated beyond what we could uh, literally uh, imagine yes. when it first started out. But th that's literally, I think... It's the, exactly the what it is, right? It's constant innovation. The innovation yes. literally spurred on something beyond our uh, yeah. wildest imagination. And it wouldn't have occurred if everything was to be shared. Yeah. Um, because there are companies at the back of it reaping rewards. The Samsung launches a new uh, product, yes. Apple launches a new product, so it's... At the end of the day, competition is necessary. Yes, <laughs> healthy, healthy, healthy competition. Healthy competition is necessary. Now, a quick one, uh, last question before we uh, take a break. Uh, what's the IP landscape in Malaysia like? So awareness, when I started 12 years ago, awareness was not um, as much as, as it is now. So that's a good thing. Mm. Awareness has increased. Mm. Um, it used to be that a lot of multinational companies or com foreign companies being very aware of intellectual property rights. Uh, but now we find a lot of local companies, small, medium industries. Sometimes we even have sole proprietors or mm. sole inventors coming to see us about mm. IP rights. Right. So awareness is increasing mm. and the Malaysian IP office, MIPO, mm. has also been doing a lot of efforts to have talks um, in rural areas um, and in, in the city yeah. to increase awareness among the business. Right. And MIPO also also has a fund, mm. a Dana Berlia, mm. for people between I think 20 to 40 years old, mm. um, which can apply to, for a trademark or a patent for um, uh, under this fund. So th these kind of activities by the government, these kind of grants and funds, again spurs innovation among people who then think that intellectual property rights are very difficult to obtain mm. or very expensive to obtain. Mm. So um, awareness has increased and this kind of activities also spurs on those kind of awareness. Right. So but what needs to change? What's next for this? I mean, you've gotten awareness. Uh, where do we go next? I think okay, so one is aware awareness. Uh, the other thing is having a culture to innovate, a mm. culture to event, mm. invent, um, culture to create. Mm. The, the foreign countries, uh, well-developed countries, you're looking at Germany, uh, US, are constantly uh, thinking of new products, new yeah. inventions. Yeah. So it's it's about players in the lo local scene. Also, having an R&D team can be quite expensive. Yeah. But having the mentality that we constantly need to go one step better. Mm. Uh, one step better in either products we are delivering to the public or the processes that we're delivering, the services we're delivering. That kind of Kaizen attitude, constantly yeah. uh, improving slowly, uh, will create innovation it's as well. Right. And that will definitely help the country because it is a knowledge-based economy these days. That we're seeking for. Thank you so much, uh, Gita, for all the uh, enlightening us today on, in terms of intellectual property. We have a five-part series. So this is the first of uh, uh, five parts. Uh, in a fortnight, we'll be talking uh, more on intellectual property if in more specific details so uh, do stay tuned but we'll be taking a short breather right now thanks for staying with us we'll be right back